Okay, great. Uh, thanks a lot. And um, so in the next 15 minutes, I would like to present some novel methods uh, improving the outcome of your downstream analysis when you work with primary tumor samples. So just some words on introduction. As you know, uh, tumors are very heterogeneous tissues. So they are composed of tumor cells or different tumor subpopulations, but also a huge variety of cells of non-tumor origin, including white and red blood cells, endothelial cells, pericytes, fibroblasts, and so on. So the basic is that when you perform your analysis like next generation sequencing or also gene expression analysis, on such samples here, you will always induce a bias that is based on the frequency and also composition of the infiltrating cells. So at Milton e, over the past years, we have developed a complete workflow to streamline this process by only analyzing your target cells, starting with solid tissues, storing these tissues and shipping these tissues, uh, and then optimize tissue dissociation to get a single cell suspension of viable cells, which is a prerequisite for the further isolation of your cells of interest. And I will very briefly go into this, as uh, this is very uh, established already since uh, some years on the market. So we have developed the instrument family, the Gentlemax dissociators, and uh, also optimized enzyme components for uh, dissociation of solid tissues and spend a lot of work in optimizing this for, for uh, tumors of mouse and also human origin. So, and the, the principle here is that by the combination of uh, enzyme treatment and optimized mechanical dissociation, we can use very mild enzymes, so no trypsin or dispase or anything like that, meaning that besides you get a single cell suspension, you will preserve your cell surface markers, which are important for downstream analysis by flow, for example, but of course also if you want to isolate target cells downstream. And this uh, is a fully automated method if you use the, the uh, left-hand side uh, instrument. So when you then have your single cell suspension, you can go on with cell isolation of cells of interest. And as Milton EV mostly focus on magnetic cell separation, I will just briefly introduce the principle. It's rather easy. So you start with a heterogeneous cell population of single cells, and then you use monoclonal antibodies that are specific to a cell surface marker on your target cell, and these antibodies are coupled to paramagnetic nanoparticles. So when you then apply the cell suspension to a column that is placed in a magnetic field, the non-labeled cells will flow through the column, whereas the labeled cells stay in the column. When you remove the column from the magnetic field, you can elude the labeled cells. And of course, this is also possible vice versa, meaning if you do not know any marker on your target cell, or if you do not want to touch your target cell with an antibody, you can use cocktails of antibodies labeling the non-wanted cells. So your uh, cells of interest will be in the negative fraction in the flow through, meaning that this is a negative selection, or we also call it untouched isolation. And all the methods I will present today are indeed negative selection approaches. So we have three main uh, objectives here. We want to isolate human tumor cells out of xenograft tumors. We want to isolate human tumor cells out of primary human tumors. And we want to isolate mouse tumor cells out of syngenic or genetically induced mouse tumors. So I will go a little bit more into detail in the first part because the principle is always the same. And then I will briefly introduce also the other two parts. Uh, the first and second method, they are already released to the market. The third one is in the last phase of development, so this will be released about mid of this year. So when you work with xenografts, you know that during the growth phase in vivo, xenografts are infiltrated by cells of mouse origin, and the degree and also composition of infiltration is highly dependent on your tumor model, the growth rate, the site of injection, and many more factors. So, what you can see here are three different non-small cell lung cancer xenografts, patient-derived xenografts, and you see there's a huge variety in the frequency of infiltrating mouse cells. But even if you keep the model and everything else constant and you just inject one model into both flanks of the same mouse, you will see a big heterogeneity in the infiltration of mouse cells. And if you would then, for example, do gene expression analysis on these samples of proteome, you will always get a bias that is uh, dependent on the infiltration. So, what we have done is to perform a large cell surface marker screening, about 450 antibodies on different mouse tissues and strains to define a cocktail of antibodies that is able to recognize all the different mouse cells from all the different organs of all the different mouse strains. Meaning 
that this method is completely independent on any marker that is expressed on your human cells. So you do your dissociation, you have your heterogeneous single cell suspension composed of human and mouse cells. You just add the labeling cocktail, you wait about 15 minutes, and then you pass it over the magnetic column. And then this, in only about 20 minutes, gives you a pure population of your human cells. And because this is independent on any marker, it works with solid tumors, with li liquid tumors, and also with even non-tumor cells like hematopoietic stem cells or other cells that you graft into a mouse host. And in the lower panel, you see that starting with the original fraction after dissociation, about 20% human epcam positive carcinoma cells in the negative fraction, just with this 20-minute procedure, you end up with very nice and homogeneous uh, populations of human tumor cells. And as mentioned, this is independent on the tumor model. So you see here renal, lung, and bladder cancer xenografts. And all of them uh, can be uh, used with the same method to get uh, your pure cells. Of course, looking at the downstream analysis, um, one very important one is uh, culture. So you want to culture this, your cells after xenograft expansion of your, your human tumor cells um, to do, for example, in vitro drug testing, drug sensitivity, modeling, and uh, if you just dissociate a tumor and you plate everything, you will end up with very heterogeneous cultures. So basically human tumor cells here uh, stand in green, glow, growing on a, a bed of mouse cells, uh, depicted here in uh, the mesenchymal part in, in red with women tin staining, mostly fibroblasts, but also macrophages, endothelial cells, and other mouse cells. So if you now would do your uh, drug sensitivity testing on such uh, cultures, you will always uh, have struggle uh, to, to interpret which effects really come from your target cell and which effects come from the contaminating cells. Whereas when you just isolate the cells in the beginning, you start with nice homogeneous cultures, it would be much easier to interpret all the data that you receive from this. So one further fact that was first observed in a, a customer lab, a Jeremy Rich at the Cleveland Clinic. So they work with uh, glioblastoma xenografts and they take the glioblastoma cells lentivirally attack them with GFP and then autotopically graft them into the mouse brain. And then after a few weeks, they dissociate the whole mouse brains to get out the human cells. And when you've worked with adult brain dissociation, you may know that uh, when you dissociate an adult brain, even containing a tumor, you end up mostly with debris and uh, dead cells due to all the myelin and, and all this. So it's, it's a very messy uh, dissociation. And so next to the problem of having uh, the GFP uh, negative tumor cells infiltrating into the tumor, you see that the cells only uh, are about 9% in this dissociation, so the vast majority is debris and dead cells. And next to removing the mouse cells, showing in the uh, right panel, uh, you see that in the second, uh, second from the right, uh, we also are able to deplete the vast majority of these debris and dead cells, meaning that you have a very cleaned up uh, sample afterwards, which of course benefits all kind of downstream analysis. And it's also for, true for other tumor entities like breast cancer xenografts here also from customer lab. You say, see by H2KD staining, um, the mouse cells are gone. But also when you look at the forward side scatter gating, you get from a very messy um, population to very nice uh, cell, uh, cell population. And when you look at the first, uh, so on the left panel, you see that also the viability increases from about 56 to 77%. So we performed downstream analysis in different uh, variations. And uh, shown here is a uh, whole exome, next generation sequencing. The first thing we observed is that the overall quality uh, of, the, of the sequencing was uh, significantly improved. So you see a higher cluster density, more read counts, and therefore also higher coverage. And this is probably due to the fact that you deplete the dead cells and the debris, so you have an overall higher quality of the sample before you start your downstream analysis. And just one last example here was the uh, prediction of uh, high-impact single nucleotide polymorphisms, which was, of course, one of the, the key aspects of whole exome sequencing. And when you see in the, in the upper part, um, when uh, we try to, to predict high-impact SNPs, we saw that uh, we find a heterozygous uh, deletion of the start codon of this GRIA3 gene here, whereas when we depleted the mouse cells, you see this mutation is gone. So indeed, it was not a mutation in a tumor cell, but it was just mouse reads mapping to the human genome and therefore causing a misinterpretation of the data. So due to time reasons, I will not go into further details. If you uh, are interested in the molecular analysis, uh, please uh, let us know or visit our booth. We can send you the, the posters uh, via PDF, no problem. So the next step, as I mentioned, the principle is exactly the same. However, here it's a little bit more challenging because we, um, 
we have not, uh, we cannot use species-specific antibodies. So again, we performed a cell surface marker screening, about 450 antibodies, to define epitopes expressed on normal human tissues and infiltrating cells, but not on all kinds of human tumor cells. And as shown here, you see after dissociation, a very heterogeneous uh, picture, the major contaminants, white blood cells, red blood cells, fibroblasts, and endothelial cells. Again, applying this 20-minute procedure, you end up with very nice and homogeneous samples of human tumor cells. When you look in uh, cultures, uh, you see, again, uh, plating the cells, you end up with a mixture of epithelial stromal fractions, whereas when you isolate the tumor cells before, uh, you end up with very nice homogeneous cultures for downstream analysis. And also the risk of overgrowing fibroblasts by uh, the tumor cells so that they cannot plate at all or are overgrown and therefore you lose the culture is significantly reduced. And this also works when uh, handling uh, samples containing only leash, uh, initially very low amounts of tumor cells like pluriffusion or ascites. So this is from an ovarian carcinoma pluriffusion containing only about 2% tumor cells in original fraction. We plated this and you see the culture looks very, uh, very messy. So you see some tumor cells, but also a lot of fibroblasts, blood cells, and debris, red blood cells. So it's very hard uh, to, to get a nice growing culture here. Whereas when you perform the depletion of the non-tumor cells prior to plating the cells, you see a very nice homogeneous culture of ovarian carcinoma cells, also showing this hallmark of multinucleation. And uh, what is also a nice fact is that the lower panel that was not washed, it was directly put to imaging. The upper panel we washed five times with PBS, otherwise we wouldn't have been able to see any uh, cells growing there. So last example, the isolation of mouse tumor cells from primary mouse tumors. And again, similar as in you, for the human setting, we had to really define what kind of antibodies we can use to deplete the lineage cells, but keep all the tumor cells. And um, because Actually, there's no very good marker like EPCAM in the mouse that labels a huge variety of mouse tumor cells. We lentivirally detect them with GFP before in vivo injection, so we could, re could really track them because, for example, mouse EPCAM is a really bad marker also expressed on blood cells. So you see the GFP positive tumor cells and the GFP uh, negative non-tumor cells. Here depicted CD26, B16, and 41 tumors, and by playing this uh, se uh, separation uh, protocol that will be available very soon, you end up with very nice and homogeneous um, samples of GFP-positive tumor cells. Again, culture looks uh, very heterogeneous when you play the original fraction and very homogeneous GFP-positive tumor cells. This is a CT26 tumor um, after separation. So just a final slide on, on the outlook, because in particular when you work with xenograft samples, also syngenetic tumors, you may work with very large cohort sizes. So, uh, meaning that you have a higher need for automation to streamline your process. And I already mentioned in the beginning that we automated the dissociation procedure, and we now also spend a lot of optimization uh, for these me methods for the Multimax uh, 24, so you can do 24 separations in parallel, and we are now working on this Multimax X depicted here on the right-hand side. And um, so this fully automates the separation procedure, meaning that you can have automated tissue dissociation and then directly go to full automated um, cell separation so that you can handle uh, large cohort sizes very easily. So with this, I would like to thank you for your attention, uh, my team members, my Milton colleagues, and of course also my collaboration partners. Thank you.